This is a two-movement time lock by the Mosler Corporation, dated somewhere around the 1920s, maybe early 30s. It is from a series of locks that they called a delayed action timers. And each one operated a little bit differently, but we're going to look at this one today. Now what you have here is um, there normally would be two time locks, one here and one here. I removed one already uh, for the demonstration. Um, and in this center section here, you have the uh, tumblers for the time lock because on the other side is a, uh, is a, uh, a combination uh, dial. Now the interesting feature of this particular time lock is actually this little piece here. And what this does is it blocks or releases a small lever under here. So if one were to remove this and it looks very much just like a nail, has a little polished head on it, this little lever here then moves upward. See how it goes down and then goes up. Now what this does is this engages this snubber bar here, which is connected of course to the time lock. And what it does is basically it defeats the time lock so that you cannot dial in the combination to the safe basically ever. As long as this is connected, this time lock here is almost to zero and you can see the tail here of this time lock is already pushing against the snubber bar. It's almost right at this point here. And right now at the way this is set, the lock cannot be opened because the uh, this little uh, lever here will not allow the snubber bar to move all the way to the right and I will now demonstrate exactly how that works by removing these components but before I do that obviously if you insert this back in what it does is it keeps this lever permanently open or in the downward position so that the time locks can always function and allow this uh, snubber bar to be moved to the right and thus allow the combination to be dialed into the lock. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove the time lock which I've already removed all of the re retaining bolts on so this now just comes away and we'll put it off to the side here. And now what's left are is this center section here which contains the uh, the tumblers. This now comes away and you can see the uh, set of tumblers here. This is a four tumbler lock. And these have all been set basically to uh, 50. So the combination is 50, 50, 50, 50. Now what I wanted to do by removing all of these components is actually show you what's happening here. The first thing that uh, one notices is that there are two individual fences. This implies that there will be two separate combinations that can be used on this lock and indeed each one performs a different function.
This fence is the what I call the regular fence and it controls this uh, bolt on the side here to allow you to open and, uh, cl and uh, close the safe. This fence is what controls this arm here. So if one removes this pin and you see now the action of this. This is now now moving up this way. If one correctly dials in a second combination, this fence will be allowed to move inward and will then pull this down and allow then the time locks to fulfill their function and open the safe. Now what I'm trying to say here is that when this is engaged the time lock will be stopped at nearly zero. But there's still enough left that when this is pushed downward, the time lock will resume operation and allow the safe to then be opened. The, so the entire purpose of this whole thing is for the owner to decide that he may want to keep everybody and every, anyone with a combination completely locked out of the safe until the secondary combination which is used on this fence will defeat, uh, will uh, allow this to come down and, and allow the time locks to operate. Again, when this is upward, the time locks are defeated and when the time locks are defeated, the safe cannot be opened. So with all of the um, tumblers removed, and the entire cave is, is, is out of the uh, uh, lock, what we have left is just the driving cam, which you see here. And pretend that all of the tumblers are, are mounted, and this is the opening where the fence could move inward and allow it to be activated. And so all four tumblers are above it and they're all aligned and, the, and thus the fence can, can move in. So what you have here is if this is right here, this fence is being prevented from moving inward into this, into the tumblers through this part here and the reason why that is being prevented is that normally the time locks should be pushing this snubber bar rightward. Now if this normal override is inserted as the time locks unwind they will move this snubber bar over like so and thus this will allow this to be engaged and you can see that this moves inward and the safe is thus unlocked. However, if this is removed, then this cannot open the safe under any circumstances even if the time locks are trying to move the snubber bar to the right. It overrides the time locks. It, it is an unusual kind of situation where you normally don't want time locks to be overridden and fail, but here this actually is causing a sort of failure in the time locks. It is causing the time locks not to do their normal job. And that again is to prevent anyone from getting into the safe, even the person with the correct combination. Now as long as this little safety pin is put in, the time locks are always able to do their job. But let's say this safety has been removed and the time locks now are, are blocked from being able to move this snubber bar all the way to the left as they would be able to do if this were uh, push downward. So now we need a secondary combination in order to allow the time locks to then operate. 
that is done this way. And what you have here is the secondary fence now being allowed to go into this indentation in the tumblers and what it does is now it pushes this downward. You see the action? This is turned and now you'll see this coming downward. That is then pulled down and the time locks which would have been stopped because their tails would have touched this when it was in this locked position are now free to again operate and move this thing completely over. I'm now going to demonstrate the delay action of this time lock. Now if you remember before uh, we talked about this little lever here and when it was in the downward position this would operate as a normal time lock allowing this snubber bar to move toward the right and allowing the uh, uh, combination then to be dialed into the uh, into this time lock and thus open allow this to move to the right and open the uh, the safe now what we have here is this is engaged currently which is preventing these time locks from moving their engagement levers here all the way to the right and this is being blocked from moving so this in the state that it's in right now this time lock cannot ever be opened uh, with the normal combination now let's say for example the owner wanted to have this safe locked for an indefinite period of time and there were other people who had uh, the combination well he could wind these time locks up to their maximum which is 120 hours but that's only going to give him five days of protection so if he wanted to be away for longer than five days this is what he would do he would remove this safety pin which goes in here and then that would allow this to then move upward blocking this um, snubber bar so now the safe remains closed permanently so when it comes time for him to want to open the safe eventually he then has to dial in the secondary combination which operates as we've seen before on this other fence which you can see here and we showed previously so once that combination is properly dialed in then that fence would be engaged and you can see the engagement here once again I'll move this over and that fence is now going to be engaged and when that fence is engaged, as I continue to move this over, you will now see this small lever will now, un will now be driven downward. And now the time locks are, are operating because the pressure has been released from the snubber bar this this is no longer holding the snubber bar in place and now the time locks have reactivated and they will continue to count down for the next uh, but takes about another 30 minutes and they will then move this snubber bar all the way over like so and then the regular combination could be dialed in and you see this is now move inward thus opening the safe and that is the whole purpose of this delayed action time lock it allows you to close this safe indefinitely uh, until you dial in the secondary combination the other interesting feature here is uh, again showing the two differing 
uh, combina the two combinations that are needed for the uh, dual fences that are here. And as you can see here, there is the line for one fence. And here is the line for the other fence. This fence is the secondary fence, which is needed to uh, be opened with the secondary combination to allow the time locks to be then engaged and allow that safe to open. And this one is for the normal combination that would be used when the time lock is functioning under normal mode. And you will see that the position of those two lines nearly identically, or not nearly, it, it does identically match where those fences physically are inside. One here at around the, say, 3 o'clock position, and the other one here, which is uh, just above a 9 o'clock position, say 9.30 or so. And once again, if we turn this around, you will see that those are positioned exactly so. One that's a little bit in the, say, about uh, uh, the uh, uh, three at three o'clock or nine o'clock, nine thirty position, and this one again in a say about oh a two thirty, almost three o'clock position. Now, in closing uh, on the discussion about this time lock, um, it's obvious that if you were a very knowledgeable person or a safe tech type of person, you would be able to know that if there were two fences within this time lock, and of course, because the outside dial has the two separate markings, that if you knew the original combination, the normal one, you could then interpolate backwards and figure out what the actual combination would be for the secondary fence to then release the safe. Now, as with most of uh, the uh, industry for vaults and locks and time locks, much of the security is provided through basically secrecy, that is, or lack of knowledge. Uh, the average person who would be having access to this safe, if they were a person with the original combination, would not know either the secondary combination or would not know enough about how this lock actually worked to be able to, to interpolate backwards the secondary combination to be able to then uh, uh, allow these time locks to begin working again and then allow that safe to be opened.